Good morning, happy Sabbath, uh, good evening from wherever you're watching us from. Thank you for joining us again for this lesson study. Um, on lesson three, still doing the book of Ephesians, how to follow Jesus in trying times. Last week we studied lesson two, God's grand Christ-centered plan. And this week we are going to look at the power of the exalted Jesus. And I'm joined by my wonderful panel who I'll ask to um, who I'll ask to introduce themselves, but after we say a word of prayer, I'll ask the only gentleman to pray for us. Good morning, let us pray. Gracious, loving Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much uh, this morning as we want to delve in th into this week's lesson. We want to ask, Lord, that you may grant us thy Holy Spirit, that you may lead us in all that we are going to say, and indeed, uh, uh, give us understanding on all that we are going to learn together with all our viewers we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, uh, we do the salam part. Uh, greetings, starting with you. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. My name is Janet Chamatia. I'm glad to be here. Karibu sana, Janet. Happy Sabbath. My name is Brian Siabe. You are all welcome, and uh, let us learn together. Karibu sana. Um, the Lord is good. Um, Becky Omondi, welcome to the session. Today. Okay, Becky. I want to appeal. Uh, will be leading us through this study. The power of the exalted Jesus. Our key text comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, through the Holy Spirit, believers may know. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places? You know, it is so human to just want power, to be more powerful, to get the next best phone in the market. The new iPhone and recently what is really an obsession for the human beings is the AI, artificial intelligence. What app of artificial intelligence is being developed? The best one, the powerful one, the one that can perform so much, um, so, much so many things at once. Just the power, power is what we are looking at. So through this week, we are going to look another source of power that is not the source of human beings, but the source of God, the source, the power that is from God. God is the source and through Jesus Christ. And as we just go through the Sunday part, we are going to learn how are we going to get there where we just are acknowledging that God is the source of power and we have to believe in that as Christians and how are we supposed to just use the power. Brian, praying and thanksgiving. We see that um, Paul, as he starts the book of Ephesians, he starts with prayer and he gives thanksgiving and the question that I'll ask in the Monday part even as you give your own comment is what is the effect of us praying and giving thanks as opposed to us praying and just complaining all through the prayers as you give your Monday, your comments on the Sunday thank you thank you thank you Ramona mm -hmm. praying and thanksgiving you know even just to set the context of this uh, uh, the, the Sunday part of this lesson, praying and thanksgiving. Mm. Looking at the book of uh, Ephesians and uh, the tone in which it is written, you know, uh, verse 1, Paul says, mm. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, mm. by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus, at Ephesus, mm. and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be unto you and peace from God, our okay. Father, and from, from the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, from that tone alone, mm. Because in the previous lesson, we established that this book was written while Paul was in, uh, in, in prison. Mm -hmm. But the tone that is in this book is, you, you, if you are asked, you know, if you didn't know that Paul was in, writing from prison and you asked the person, mm -hmm. where do you think the person who was writing this book is? You know, you'd, you, you'd uh, conclude that this person is somewhere, you know, comfortable, somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, in good circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the same tone that still Paul keeps when he's writing this uh, prayer mm -hmm. that is in Eph Ephesians 1 uh, from verse uh, 15, he maintains that, uh, you know, tone of, you know, yes, I'm in prison, but he's not even mentioning it. You know, mm -hmm. you'd, you'd expect him to start this prayer like, you know, uh, 
I'm suffering. I'm, I'm suffering, yeah. I I'm in prison, yeah. <laughs> yes. But we mm. see Paul, you know, starting this prayer. Mm. Uh, if I can just read the first two texts of uh, First Ephesians uh, 15, it says this. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. You know, he's, he's forgetting about his condition, his circumstances, and he's mentioning and telling the Ephesians, hey, I, I never cease giving thanks about you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this is someone who is in prison. And we are talking about praying mm -hmm. and thanksgiving in this larger theme of uh, Ephesians and following Christ uh, in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. I think that is a big lesson for us uh, first to establish that in praying, our circumstances should not dictate the tone of our prayer. Mm -hmm. And when you hear someone praying, you, you, you just conclude, hey, this guy is in so much trouble. Mm -hmm. This guy is, <laughs> is really suffering. Mm. But we don't see that uh, in, in, in Paul's uh, prayer that is, is, is praying for, for, for the Ephesians. So that is the first thing we need to establish, mm -hmm. uh, that our circumstances, no matter what we are going through, it shouldn't dictate, uh, you know, we come to God in a somber mood, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, you just listen to a prayer and say, ah, this person is really, is really suffering. Mm -hmm. But let us learn from Paul the way he's, he's, he's presenting his prayer. And we want to establish what is the place of thanksgiving in mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. you know. This is something very key that we are going uh, uh, to, to learn from today's lesson. That what is the, the, the part of thanksgiving in prayer? Is it that sometimes we just come to prayer and all we come with the prayer is a list, <laughs> is a list of our needs, is a list of our, that which is troubling us. But Paul is giving thanks. For, and and, and this, this, this is the second thing that we need to establish in, in, in prayer. That Paul has like put himself in the background mm -hmm. and is putting to the Ephesians that, hey, I have you in mind. Mm -hmm. Even in my bonds here in prison, I have you in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that should uh, in, encourage us. So it goes on to say that uh, uh, Paul says that in, in uh, let me read verse, verse uh, 18, the eyes that, from verse 17, sorry, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In this prayer, Paul is trying to remind the Ephesians, you know, look, friends, and from previous lessons, we had established that, you know, Ephesians is a book of... It's like he's trying to remind uh, the Ephesians, yes, you, have, you gave your lives to Christ. Last mm -hmm. week, we talked about the deposit of the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, being a guarantor that, yes, you have been purchased. And he's trying to pray in his prayer for an infilling mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit to bring them to remembrance that, hey, what is your place mm -hmm. in the Lord uh, uh, Jesus Christ? And there is one thing, a, a, a word that Paul is using here, that I don't cease praying for you. Mm. We are told that pray unceasingly. Mm. What does it really mean to pray unceasingly? Is, does it, is, is Paul trying to say that, you know, all the time, you know, you should be kneeling, all mm. the, everywhere you are, you are, you are kneeling, you are in your, in your closet, you are, you are working in your office, every five minutes you are saying, hey, let me go somewhere and you are going to pray. No. Paul is trying to encourage us to have an attitude of prayer. Mm. You know, an attitude of prayer of as you are walking, you know, on the road, you are thanking God that you are able even to have a work that you, you, you are able to earn a living. Uh, you, you have a family. Mm. You know, that is the attitude that Paul is showing us. And the fact that he had the efficiency in thought in his mind, that is the attitude we should have for our fellow Christians, mm. for our fellow Adventists, that Yes, we are worshiping here, but we should also remember other Christians the world over. Mm -hmm. You know, there are Christians somewhere who are suffering. Mm -hmm. They don't have these facilities that we are able to worship. Some in the Middle East are worshiping, you know, in fear. They can't meet freely. Mm -hmm. They are worshiping in companies. They can't have congregations like this. Paul is trying to encourage us 
uh, we can learn from Poland and have such people in mind mm -hmm. as, we, as, as, as we pray. When we see challenges in the world, mm -hmm. let us have an attitude of prayer and, and pray for the people that are suffering. Pray for the people that are going uh, without food. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, worshiping Christ in, a, in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. There is a crisis right now. There mm -hmm. are crises. I don't know where you, you are living, but where I'm living... There is a crisis. <laughs> you know, in these days, in this day and age, there are crises mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so Paul is trying to, 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 to uh, make us have this attitude of thanksgiving. Have this attitude of praying. And sometimes, you know, we are uh, guilty. Uh, we have reached a place where we see prayer as a mundane thing. You know, it, it has become something like uh, uh, it is, it's a duty. It, it's a duty a checkpoint that, yes, I've woken up, I've prayed. Uh, yes, I'm going to eat. Uh, I've prayed. I'm going to sleep. I've prayed. What is the place of prayer in our, in our lives as Christians mm -hmm. in this day and age? Paul is establishing that the place of prayer in a Christian is very key. That this is something uh, that we should so embrace and so honor the hour of prayer. That it should not, we should not reach a point where uh, we take it as a normal thing and, and we, are, we become so mechanical in our prayers. Mm. By thinking of the Ephesians while in prison, that is a way that Paul is showing us that we can prevent our prayer lives becoming so, so mechanical by not only thinking of ourselves coming to prayer just for our needs, but also thinking of our fellow Christians, thinking of those who have not known Christ, who are suffering out there, by having them key in our, in, in, in our, in our prayer lives. And you know, uh, once we do that, God will take care of our needs. Mm -hmm. God knows that which we desire. When he sees that we are more concerned about others out there than our, our, ourselves. So I, I finish by saying that prayer in a Christian life is very key. Amen. And I emphasize further that mm -hmm. thanksgiving in a prayer. I mean, what as a parent, how would you feel that the child is always coming to you? Uh, Daddy, me. I need this. Mommy, I need this. Mm -hmm. I need this. You know, you would feel happy one time when they tell you, oh, thank mm -hmm. you, Mommy, you did this for me. Thank you, Daddy, you did, you did this for me. Mm -hmm. And that is that is what God wants. He wants us to appreciate that which is already done for us through Christ. And with the way we are going to see in the book of Ephesians, it's all centered on Christ. Mm -hmm. He wants us to appreciate that fact and always give thanks for what is done for us through Jesus Christ. Thank you. Uh, Janet, what are your thoughts on Sunday? Is there anything you would like to add? Um, I think um, we should praise God mm -hmm. with the sincerity of yes. our hearts. Amen. We should um, not complain. We should mm. not murmur. Mm. And as well, thanksgiving is, you know, the native language of prayer. Mm. So with a, if, you, if your heart is full of thanksgiving, the people around us will be able to see who mm. God is really, mm. who God is in our lives. Mm. So let's have the heart of gratitude, heart of thanksgiving every day. Let's let our lips be trained to speak of God's mm. goodness mm. and be thankful at all time Amen. for what God has done for us. Amen. She, Janet says that thanksgiving is the, is the native language of prayer. I find that very interesting. So before Becky, you just go to the Monday part. Please give us your thoughts on Sunday. Uh, we're just talking about um, thanksgiving and prayer, but sometimes life can be too, <laughs> and you don't have the strength of saying thanksgiving. You go to the book of Lamentation. It's the, morn the prophet is mourning all through. So does it mean that we don't mourn? We don't tell God all our troubles. Or how are we to balance the thanksgiving and the mourning that we have in our hearts? Um, thank you very much. Mm. From a last week's study, there was a, a section that um, really caught my attention that mm. the lesson writer intended us to know what to speak and at what time. Mm. And I found it very timely that in as much as we are studying the book of Ephesians, there's that desire to tell us the importance of knowing what to say. Mm. And you can see it rightly that Paul is in prison as he's writing this letter, but the tone of his voice is so different. Picture this. The city of Ephesus is known for immorality, mm -hmm. idolatry, mm -hmm. corruption, mm -hmm. and everything wrong. Mm. 
Paul had spent time in Ephesus preaching, yes. even spoke mm -hmm. to the elders, gave them a final mm -hmm. charge and mm -hmm. told them how to shepherd the flock, mm -hmm. warning them against the, 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 the wolves that were going mm -hmm. to come, including those that were amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. Many years later, he's in prison. This church that he planted, people are not going according to what he did. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely nothing prevented Paul from reading the riot act on them. Exactly. He would have just told them, guys, I'm in prison. And what are you doing? You're uh, still... I'm in prison for the work I did in I place. did in your place. <laughs> and you're here mm. leading an immoral life. Mm. Paul cho chose the high road. Yeah. He, he realized that nothing material would come out of him ranting. Mm. And him talking about Amen. the situation and lamenting mm -hmm. and... You know, he didn't sound like the way he sounded in First Corinthians. Mm -mm. He didn't sound the way he sounded to the Galatians. Mm. He simply took the high road mm. and decided to tell these people the vastness of God's love, Amen. provision, mm. magnificence, mm. and strength. And what do I draw from that? That there are situations in life beyond our control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the extent that we are still going to have the same government for this number of years, mm -hmm. there is nothing much we can do. Yes. And so in our reality mm -hmm. of difficult, harsh economic times, mm -hmm. what can we do? Mm -hmm. Other than joining the masses in ranting, mm -hmm. Paul chose to exalt the living God. Mm -hmm. And that is what I can do. Amen. Rumona, Amen. you can't change the cost of fuel. Mm -mm. <laughs> you <laughs> can't change I the wanted. price of unga. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Even if we all came to church and told you, Ramona, do it, you won't do it. Won't. But mm -hmm. when you shift your meditation from the unga, from the fuel, Amen. to the vastness mm -hmm. of the love of God for you, when you reflect back on the difficult moments that God pulled you through, mm -hmm. when you look at the totality mm -hmm. of the grand plan of salvation, underscoring the fact that Satan is behind the scenes to mm -hmm. kill, to steal, and to destroy, mm -hmm. then your mindset makes you get automatically mm -hmm. into an attitude of praise and Amen. thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And rightly so, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom, kingdom of, of God, God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added mm -hmm. unto you. Mm -hmm. Because by worrying, we cannot add a gate to our stature. No. So we are not going to come with a list on how to praise. <laughs> no. We can't mm -hmm. praise unless our mind is right. Mm. So what are we focusing on? We are not going to make other people... You, you know, people love saying... Oh, people love saying that, oh, other people are sick, you are well. That should not be a motivation for praise yes. in any way. Mm. Another person's misfortune is, is not, not a bedrock for your praise and um, thanksgiving. Yeah, for sure. You can't for come sure. and start saying, other oh, people would have wished to be here today, they are not there. No, their day ended. Their mm. plan ended. God's design for them mm. ended. What are you doing with your own? Mm. Your entire existence and its goodness is not based on another person's mm. misfortune. Mm. So regardless of other people's misfortune or not, God remains God. You remain to be a gem, mm. an inheritance, mm. the inheritance of Christ. Amen. And that should count for something. Amen. And that's, I think that's what now Paul is bringing out so magnificently mm. so that we don't end up reducing our thanksgiving to things mundane mm. that do not make such a big difference mm. in our Christian experience. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, most of the time when we are praising God, I don't know if it is just sincerely or because Nani doesn't have a job and I have a job, so let me praise God. <laughs> so you even stay in a toxic job exactly. because other people don't, don't have, have jobs. You or <laughs> yes. You know, those things that we <laughs> keep eat, telling you ourselves. You eat bad food yeah. because other people don't have food. Don't have food. You drink mm -hmm. water that you don't need because other people don't have. Yeah. So mm -hmm. such a mentality waters down mm. our genuine and sincere worship to God. I think we, I also just get reminded of God getting angry at the murmuring of the Israelites while in the wilderness. They have forgotten that God opened the the sea for them to walk. And they are here complaining, you know what? We were eating good food in Egypt. You know, what has the Lord done to you? How can you praise him? Is it coming from sincerity of your heart or someone's misfortune is motivating you to praise God. Yeah. Where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. uh, so on the Monday part, it, experiencing insights from the Holy Spirit. Becky, as you talk to us about just how the Holy Spirit, what um, Paul is telling the Ephesians about the Holy Spirit, please also help us answer a question from last week where somebody asked, does the SDA church accept 
um, the gift of the Holy Spirit of speaking in tongues. Please help us. Thank you that. very much. Uh, that's a very <laughs> interesting question, mm -hmm. and um, we'll we'll look it uh, look at it by and by. Now, one of the things that came to mind when I read Ephesians chapter one verse. Uh, 15 through 17. Uh, we've read 15, so let me read. We've read 15 and 16. Let me read 17 and 18. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your eyes, be, the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Mm. I asked myself. How do my friends pray for me? Mm. My, are my friends' prayers towards me temporal? <laughs> oh, Becky needs a promotion. Mm. Oh, Becky's son is unwell. Mm. Oh, Becky needs to travel. Fine, those are there. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's this friend who knows you. Mm. What are they praying for you mm. about? Mm. You see, Paul had about the Ephesians' mm. faith in Jesus. He had, you know. <laughs> he, it's not like he witnessed it. He heard that the Ephesians love Christ. Mm. He also heard that they love the saints. Mm. He had no confirmation of the same, mm -hmm. other than the time he had spent mm -hmm. with them. Mm. But when he got the chance to pray, he didn't pray that God may save them from backsliding. He didn't pray that God may bring them out of adultery. Mm -hmm. He chose the higher route again. What did he say? Because he knew that there's a place that when... They, there are things in life that if you know, Everything you are not going to deal with little sins of exactly. life that easily beset mm -hmm. you. So Paul decides that what the Ephesians need is actually wisdom and revelation. And understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. He mm -hmm. is trying to give them the fear of the Lord in a different way. Mm -hmm. He's not telling them, I want you to obey the commandments of God. I want you to visit the sick. I want you to feed the hungry. He simply says... I want that God gives you that spirit of wisdom. Mm. I want God to give you that spirit of revelation. That spirit that is going to cause your eye, the eyes of your understanding to be so much enlightened mm -hmm. that you will know how to esteem yourself rightly before mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. That you are going to know that that spirit tells you that in you, Christ has an inheritance. Mm -hmm. That it wasn't about how you're failing it's actually Christ on the line mm. because he gave something to have you as an inheritance. Mm. So whatever it takes to keep that inheritance, heaven is willing to do. Mm. And so Paul's desire is that they have the Holy Spirit. And something else that stuck, <clears throat> stuck my mind is that Paul's desire for the Ephesians is similar to Christ's desire for the church. Amen. Amen. In John chapter 16, Jesus speaks about the Holy Spirit in verse 7. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now, the Holy Spirit was the desire for Christ, mm. of Christ for the disciples. Mm. It was the same desire that Jesus now in Acts said, tarry ye in Jerusalem mm. until the power comes. Mm. When Paul is in prison, he is unable to do anything to save Ephesians. Mm. He writes a letter praying earnestly to God to fill them with the power of the Holy mm. Spirit. Mm. And this tells us that in our Christian experience, Without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. Mm. Without the Holy Spirit, our inheritance mm. is at stake. Mm. Without the Holy Spirit, we are not in a position to greatly understand mm. what our Christian experience is all about. And when we look now in totality of the prayer, he makes a similar prayer in Ephesians 3 verse 14. And he takes a similar approach. He says, for this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. in whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he may grant you according to his riches in glory, to be filled by his spirit through might, by, his, by might through his spirit in the inner man. Mm. That God is probably still bringing out the aspect that my desire for you mm. is that you might be strengthened mm. in the inner man, 
by the might of the Spirit. Amen. So mm -hmm. all through, Paul is trying to just underscore the, the centrality mm. of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm. The centrality of us experiencing the Holy Spirit. And for me, after reading this text one more time as we were studying the book of Ephesians, I realized that my friends would benefit more from how I pray for them. Mm. Because God has promised he will supply all you need. Amen. So for mm. me, I want to focus on praying for my friends to have this wisdom, this revelation to have the eyes of their understanding enlightened so that I focus on the spiritual things as God focuses on their temporal needs. Mm. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, the verse in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, it, it just ends by saying, the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. Paul is not writing to just any other person, but the believers, because he starts the letter by saying, the saints, the people he has been, he had preached to. So he knows them. Maybe he remembers Rumona was there. He remembers Brian was there. Janet was there. Becky was there. So he's just re reminding them, you know what? The Holy Spirit is still there. You still need his power. And like you've told us, the Holy Spirit is very important in this journey of a believer. So when we are praying for the believers, our friends who are believers, and we know that indeed they are believers, then we need to change the way we pray completely. A hundred percent. So Brad, what are your thoughts on, man on Monday part? Uh, there's this line that says, mm -hmm. in all these uh, prayers, mm -hmm. the two prayers that uh, Paul prayed for the Ephesians, mm -hmm. Paul wants these people to experience for themselves what they have been given in Jesus. Amen. Now, this is Paul, who himself has experienced. Yes, yes. <laughs> has experienced mm -hmm. what he's trying to... Imagine having something so nice, so good, mm. and you're trying to tell someone, you see, you know, you lack words, mm. you know. And so that's why he's struggling in these two prayers, praying so that the Ephesians might be filled with the Holy Spirit, that they may be able to experience, understand, and discern mm -hmm. their place mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in Jesus Christ, how uh, Christ regards them. And it leads me to ask myself this question in our today's context. Mm -hmm. Could it be, mm -hmm. could it be that we as Christians and seven-day Adventists for that matter, we have not understood why we are existing in this day and age? Mm -hmm. So that we are led to a point where we are praying for the in in feeling of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so that we may be able to appreciate how God is really desiring to use us mm. <laughs> in this day and age. That is the burden that you know Paul had for the Ephesus mm. that, uh, for the Ephesians that they may understand the their times. import before Christ mm -hmm. and what Christ has done for them and what Christ is, 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 is uh, desiring to do through them. And that's why I ask myself this question. You know, we have had uh, several programs uh, set up by the church, you know, the 10 days of prayer, mm. uh, 40 days of prayer and fasting. Mm. And, and uh, several, this theme of praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit has been there. And perhaps me and you, a church member there watching, you're wondering, why, why are we always talking about the Holy Spirit? Mm. Why, why are we always, uh, uh, you know, asking for the Holy Spirit? We have seen from Ephesus that the Holy Spirit gives us understanding. The Holy Spirit leads us to understand what Christ is trying to do through us. And so that is why there is a cry that we ought to be constantly praying for the infilling of the Holy Spirit and more so, we who are living in this uh, day and age, following Christ in uh, times of crisis, there are crises all over. Mm. So we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit that we may reach a point where he can give us discernment why we exist and what, is, uh, what ought to be our work in this day and age in uh, extending the, the Lord's coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brian. I just realized I didn't respond to the question yeah. on yeah. speaking in tongues. <laughs> mm. And... Um, Interesting to note, there is a perception among certain class of believers mm. that the clearest manifestation of the Holy power Spirit, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit either mm. is speaking in tongues mm. or performing of grand miracles. Mm. Whereas we do not dispute that such can be the manifestation mm. of the Spirit, mm. but we will ask ourselves, because the question specifically asks about speaking in tongues, mm. we may need to ask ourselves, what exactly is speaking in tongues? Mm. And the best reference I have is in Acts chapter 2, uh, on the day of Pentecost, verse 5 through, se <clears throat> through 8, we will just start from verse 6. 
And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which you were born? Mm. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So speaking in tongues as manifested on Pentecost mm. was a situation where Galileans, who were supposed to be speaking the Hebrew language, mm. spoke, but the hearers had in their local mm. languages. So this idea of saying, you know, and many others, which no one understands, exactly. does not amount to speaking mm. in tongues. So to the extent that speaking in tongues, as per the person who asked, mm. is about someone speaking, but the congregation hearing in their local language. Yes, the Seventh-day Adventists believe in speaking in tongues. Amen. And we've had several testimonies of preachers going to different and entered places, even in Africa, in South America, with their primary language being English. But for some reason, they get there and God gives them the ability to preach in the mother tongue of that area, mm. which they have never known mm. before. And so the manifestation of speaking in tongues is not about a language that people cannot that is understand. Strange. It is not incoherent. Mm. It is mm. not strange. It is mm. a known language, mm. identifiable in the world record of languages, capable of being understood by mm. a specific class of people that are within that place. That is not primarily your own language as the person speaking. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. So if the person who claims to be speaking in tongues cannot be understood, cannot be interpreted, then that I, I take or I understand from the book of Acts that the verses that we have read does not qualify to speaking in tongues from the Holy Spirit. might be from another spirit. Uh, Janet, Tuesday, participating in the resurrection power. We know that Christ died and he resurrected. Please talk to, about, talk to us about us believers participating in this resurrection power. Um, I'm really happy to be a Christian. Amen. Um, you know, understanding the power of resurrection, it's something so deep that when you think about it, you, I, sometimes I ask myself, Christ really died for me. He mm. just came and died for me because even if there was only one sinner in this world, Christ mm -hmm. would have died for that person. Mm -hmm. um, the story of redemption began long before the world was created. Mm -hmm. God had a meeting and somebody would ask, I think that one will come later, somebody will, would have asked if God knew this world was, was going, somebody was going to, you know, sin, sin. Mm -hmm. why did he create man? Mm -hmm. Those questions mm. come all often we hear them. Mm. But Christ had a plan that he will be the person who will come and redeem us. Mm. It could not be any other person. It mm. could not even be the angels. Mm. Even the most holy person who walked on earth mm. could not redeem us mm. because the price, the only person who could pay the price was Christ. And I think we also learned it from the previous lessons that we had. <laughs> so when I think about the, the, the participating in the resurrection power, first thing which comes to, to, to mind is that truly Christ resurrected. He's the only person who can lay down his life and take it back. No one else could resurrect him. It mm -hmm. means he had that power mm -hmm. to resurrect. We've seen the, 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 the miracles he did on earth mm -hmm. of resurrection. Mm -hmm. When Lazarus died, he stayed in the grave for four days. And people thought, now this one, mm. he's, he's gone completely. He cannot, he cannot wake up. Even Martha said, we know the resurrection is in the, mm. the last, the final, in the day of the coming. They never thought that Christ could resurrect their brother. Mm. In as much they, they saw the miracles that Christ did. 
they, and apart from Lazarus, there is the Jairus' daughter. Mm. You see, there's so mm. many people, even Christ just said a word for somebody who might think that they were dead and came back to life. So um, I wanted to read this first uh, Ephesians chapter 1, now 20 to 23. It says, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in, but also in that which is to, to come. come. Mm -hmm. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things in the church, which is the body, and the fullness of him that filleth all in all. No one could fill it all in all. Only Christ could do that. And we see the reward of him coming to die on our behalf. Mm -hmm. We learned last week that by sin, one man, sin came through one man mm. and redemption came through man as well. Mm. So from this, we are able to see that um, we have that hope that even when Christ comes the second time, our loved ones will mm. be raised Amen. from the dead. Amen. We also have the hope because when Christ um, beat death, we saw his coronation in heaven. Yeah, Revel um, Psalms 24. Mm. Talks about how Christ was coronated. And we saw how the oil went down through his beards. Mm. And, you know, and from there now the power of the Holy Spirit fell on the, mm. on the um, disciples. So by Christ beating death, he's coronated and he's sitting at the right hand of God. And we know right now he's interceding on, on our behalf and he's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, we are looking forward to us also participating in that resurrection mm. because even us, if we'll be alive by then, our body has to die mm. to, to be able to take immortality. Mm. No one is immortal as we speak. It's only God who is immortal. Um, John chapter chapter 10 verse 17 John chapter 10 verse 17 it says I don't know if that was the verse that I wanted to read um, so, we can, so we can read 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14 1 Corinthians 15 Should I read? Yes, please. First Corinthians fifteen fourteen says, And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Mm. Amen. So, it will be in vain if Christ did not resurrect. Mm. Because we see by him resurrecting, we have hope of eternal life. Mm. Also, um, in his divinity, Christ possessed the power to break the bonds of death. Mm. Because there's no one else who could, who could defeat death if it was not Christ. Mm. We know in the end, death will, death will be the last to be thrown into the lake of fire. Mm. So let's not lose hope. Mm. No matter what, Christ died, he lived with us, mm. he died, mm. he resurrected, and he's seated at the, at the right hand of the Father. Mm. So we should, be, we should have hope. I know people might be discouraged. Mm. And say, you know, why am I living? Mm. Yeah? Why, why should I? I why should I bother with life? Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Yeah. As we had even today, there are people who might even contemplate, you know, uh, committing suicide and all that, just because they've lost hope. Mm. But as Christians, let's not um, give up, because God has not given up on us. Mm. He hasn't, because of the love that He had for us, He allowed His Son, His begotten Son, to come and die on our behalf and to take all the burden of sin that would we would have really you know gotten as punishment but because of his love towards us he's given us Christ and the power of his resurrection amen, amen.
Thank you. Um, before we get to you, Brian, our time is not on our side, but we'll try and just see how much we can get. Becky, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. We've seen pastors resurrecting people of late. Mm. And, you know, during Paul's time, the Bible records that God did a lot of miracles through Paul. Handkerchiefs were able to heal people through Paul in Acts chapter 9. And we still people being claiming that they have been resurrected from the dead. Mm -hmm. Is this how we are supposed to participate in this resurrection power? Because we know that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is still there up until today. Mm -hmm. And we have access to it because mm -hmm. we are children of God. Mm -hmm. So what are your comments in regards to that? Thank you. Um, the reason why the, the, the resurrection of Christ has been the subject of meditation mm. by many hymn writers. Mm. And one of the hymn writers says that the death, death could not hold him could sway. Not hold him. That, mm -hmm. that up from the, the grave he arose, yes. he triumphed from, uh, he, he triumphed over his force. Mm. And the reason because he had no sin. So the, the correlation between that power that raised Jesus from the dead mm. and the greatness, the exceeding greatness of that power that we can experience mm. can be tapped by absence of sin. <laughs> that Christ was able to harness it mm. because he was sinless, sinless, yet provided by opportunities to sin, he chose the path of holiness. Mm. Now, you and I are not, even if pastors raise people from the dead, it is God who raises mm. Or maybe whatever power they are using. Mm. But the purpose of Paul writing to us about this power mm. is to show us that we too can overcome Amen. so much so mm. that on the last day, mm. we will not be held by the grave. Mm. We will be able to resurrect and claim immortality in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the lesson writer invites us to consider things that may deny us this power. Mm. And one of them is sin condoning a life of sin mm. is going to deny us th this power because Paul had earlier spoke in verse 7 that in Christ we have redemption, mm. we have forgiveness according to the riches of his glory mm. so that this conversation that comes up the point of ha saying that we have an exceeding greatness uh, that according to the power that worked in raising Jesus mm. it's just a reminder for you and I that all this is ours to possess mm. But for sin, if we abide in sin, it may not be ours anymore. Mm. And so he invites us to consider Jesus in whom we get redemption mm. so that we may experience the fullness of this exceeding great power mm. that has been offered to us. Amen. Amen. And you know, Janet just tells us that this... The Tuesday part is just to, to encourage us not to be afraid, to understand that God is powerful. And as we move to the Wednesday part, we just see Christ above all powers. There are powers that were there. And when you read the book of Acts, where it should be Acts chapter 19, where there was some miracles that were happening but they were not really really good miracles because people ended up running away when you read the whole book of the the verses that are acts chapter 19 11 all through verse 20 but i'll read from verse 14 there were these people that were exercising and then this are, these are the questions that the evil spirit is asking and the evil spirit answered and said jesus i know paul i know but who are you you know there are powers that are there. We are not denying that there are powers that are there. Whose source is not God, is not Jesus Christ. There are other powers. But just talk to us about Christ above all powers. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. I, more and more as, I, as we study the book of uh, Ephesians, mm. I'm getting to appreciate the choice of words, you know, that it's not by chance or accident that Paul uses some of the phrases or words that he's using in the book mm -hmm. of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. There is a meaning to that. And I, I saw that in this week's lesson when I was reading Ephesians uh, 1, verse, uh, verse, verse uh, 21. Far above all principality mm -hmm. and power and might mm -hmm. and dominion mm -hmm. and every name that is named, not in this world, but also in that which is to come. Why is Paul 
using this phrase above every name mm. so you and and you go back and study the culture of the Ephesians back then they loved you know naming deities names you know mm. they, they gave them all sorts of names you know like in uh, Ephesus we had this Artemis the, the patron goddess uh, the keeper of the city mm. so they, they loved names like you know I, I could say name dropping you know when they, <laughs> they were doing their, their, their sorceries and all that mm -hmm. we, we, we saw in the previous lesson them burning books and all that why? It's because they believed in some, you know, powers Society, in the skies, in the stars, <laughs> and all that. Mm -hmm. That they believed these these powers mm -hmm. were, were were responsible for ordering their lives, mm -hmm. uh, their life issues. Uh, that you you know you you are like enslaved to their to their will, mm -hmm. and and uh, and uh, and the guidance. So Paul, in mm -hmm. in mentioning here, is trying to make to tell the Ephesus and to to make sure that they understand that above every other name here or not or above even the future there is no other so yeah. paul is trying to make that very clear yeah. that christ is above all names and and he's belaboring in his in his letter to the ephesians to make sure that they understand because he knows this is the problem that existing perhaps even today yeah, there, 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 there are people who call themselves christians mm -hmm. but they still you know, believe and understand that there are some powers that have, uh, you know, power over them. And, you know, you usually see this in maybe in, in, in funerals or such, like someone is a Christian, but he's still fearing about this, uh, these uh, dark powers. And Paul is trying to tell you and me this day and age that Christ's name, mm. Christ is above all powers. Above all powers. And as a Christian, nothing should give me fear. Amen. Nothing should give you fear that, Amen. you know, ah, uh, you know, there is, there is some darkness out there that are, uh, is, is controlling my life mm -hmm. you know and that's why in this in this in this prayer Paul is trying to encourage you and me mm -hmm. and telling us that see child of God mm -hmm. there is nothing you, you, you ought to fear Amen. don't put your trust in some power out there uh, you know in consulting witchcraft and all mm -hmm. that and, and forgetting you know the most painful thing is that you you are a child of God and then you know you you, you leave and go out to to consult such uh, such things mm -hmm. or you're a christian and you mm -hmm. still believe you know reading the the, the stars you know the yeah, <laughs> what astrology, the astrology and, and trying to see what they are controlling mm. uh, what they're saying about your life no child of god you are a child of, you and i are a child of god christ died for us we have just talked about participating in the resurrection power Amen. of christ imagine Amen. that power the resurrection uh, christ is there for us mm -hmm. and we are being invited to pass put to participate in that uh, uh, resurrection uh, power of Jesus. And so what I'd like to encourage us and leave us with is that Christ is enthroned, seated at the right hand of the Father. And that is the power that he wills, that everything at, at, you know, at his disposal is there for us. If we only surrender our lives to him, he is willing and able to make us uh, victorious in our Christian journey. So no amount of sin or any sin or addiction should hold us back or anything else in this world should hold us back because Christ has the power to free us. Amen. Christ has the power to make us victorious. Christ Amen. has the power to uh, be able to make the church mm. do great works and wonders for his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Janet, just talk to someone who He's facing fears, you know. Uh, the weatherman has woken up and said, in Kenya, there'll be an earthquake. A tsunami is coming on this place. You know, sometimes these things happen when, without our knowledge, but sometimes we are actually warned. Uh, Al-Shabaab are going to strike or they have strike somewhere, you know. Please talk to that person that is having all these fears. Um. What I would like to say is trust in the Lord. Amen. There's a verse in Psalms chapter 56, verse 3, and Brian had mentioned it. It says, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Mm. It means when we are in, we, we know fear brings doubt. Mm. Let's start there. Mm. And fear, fear is an attribute of sin mm. because it's not of the Lord. Amen. God wants us to be confident in him and trust him 100%. When he says, I will save you, we should not doubt that word. Mm. If we have fear, then 
why are we trusting God? Why are we putting, why are you coming to church or why are you trying to, be, to walk this journey? Um, if Christ himself was able to, 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 to face all the challenges that came head on without fear mm. because he trusted on his father, the same um, hope and trust we should also have us as Christians. Mm. So whenever you are afraid, list, our listener, our viewer out there, please trust in the Lord because that's what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Another thing, um, I would encourage you to also pray because f fear is something that is within us. Even sometimes you might go for a job interview, you're so mm -hmm. fearful, you're like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to make it because mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. we are, you've, already, uh, you've already, you know, passed judgment on yourself. Mm -hmm. You see, we should trust and live on God's promises because the word of God is very clear on his promises mm. for us. He loves us so much and he wants us to, to, to depend on his promises. We should not forget that the act de deceiver himself. He's the father of fear. You know, he made our parents fall in heaven. Mm. When Christ was coming to the garden to look for Adam, they were fearful. They went and hid themselves, you know. Fear came into them. Mm. And yet these were people who are walking with God, talking to God every day, in the morning, in the evening. The angels were attending to them, you know, telling them even of this deceiver who was coming to, to you know, lie to them. They had conversations mm. here and there. So let's trust in the Lord 100 or 1,000 percent if there's something like that. <laughs> let's trust in the Lord. Mm. And let's, not, let's always remember that the, the devil is not happy if you trust in the Lord. What he did to Job. He brought a lot of sickness. Mm. He brought a lot of, you know, deaths. His children died. Mm. His flock died. You know, one, one after another, a messenger coming in saying, you know this one, mm -hmm. this has happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, the wind came. This, mm -hmm. this has happened. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine getting bad news. All within. Every, mm -hmm. you know, every, every minute. minute. Yeah. It was not even, they didn't even give him time mm -hmm. to breathe, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Bad news after every bad news. Mm -hmm. But look at what Job did. Job trusted in the Lord. Mm -hmm. His friends... Actually, were fearful because they were saying, in fact, there's something you did mm. that you're being punished. Mm. So let's um, embrace God, trust in his word, because the power of the Holy Spirit will bring us into all truth. Mm. Becky mentioned something about, you know, having the insight. It means the Holy Spirit will, will give clarity. Even when you, you're doubtful, just say a whisper a prayer and God will always come through for you and that fear will, you know, go away. Okay. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we are going to do the Thursday part, all of us. Jesus, all things, and his church. Uh, just before we go to the Thursday part, this, this verse that keeps, I keep telling myself every other time I'm faced with fear. It's in, in Philippians. I just don't know which particular verse, but it says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall Philippians bow. Philippians chapter 2. Chapter yeah, actually, it's chapter two. <laughs> Should be verse eight or nine. Um, eight or nine, no. Actually, verse ten. That verse at the 10. name of Jesus, I'm reading from the book of Philippians, chapter two, verse ten, New King James Version. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth. Every one of them will bow. So Amen. if you are battling fear, just call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's the safest name that we can call on. The Thursday part, starting with you, Becky. Jesus, all things and his church. What are your thoughts? What did you grasp from that lesson? Um, thank you. One of the things that fascinate me a lot is that the imagery that Paul is building of the church mm. stands out as he ends this particular mm. uh, chapter in Ephesians. Um, Ephesians 1 verse 22 and 23, uh, reading from the New King James Version, it says, And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Mm. Um, the diction, the punctuation, I mean, everything brings out what he means, that mm. Christ is now head over everything mm. to the church. Mm. And now the description of the church is being given as the church is the body of Christ. Mm. And also the church is the fullness of he who fills all in all. Mm. So that when... When, when Christ is the church, there is no emptiness. Mm. There is no 
a situation where we can say there is no church mm -hmm. because the church itself is the, the Christ the church is the body of Christ. Mm. So we can never say at one point that the church is dead, the church mm. is gone. It mm. abides forever because it is him who fills it all in all. It's him who founded it. Yeah, the mm. church has one foundation, the mm. hymn writer says. Mm. And that is just to remind us that none of us has a monopoly of the church. Mm -hmm. That when we tend to feel as if the church cannot operate in our absence, <laughs> it might be because we are motivated by selfishness. Mm. Because true to it, the church is Christ. The church it's has one you. foundation, which is Christ. Mm. It is Christ who loved the church mm. and gave himself for it. Mm. So if Christ was willing to die for the sake of the church, what more mm. can he not do? Mm. So if you down your tools for your church, because you are perturbed <laughs> by the apparent immoralities and corruptions going on. Only in the church. You are just one of the sheep gone mm. and Christ will seek you as he always does. Yeah. But the church goes on. When him writer says, mm. his truth marches on. Amen. It marches on mm. regardless of our position. Mm. But Paul is using this to remind us just if we forgot <laughs> that the church is the body mm. of Christ. And it is him who feels all in all. It's the fullness of him who feels all in all. So mm. it is in his hands. He will deliver mm. unto himself a church, holy and blameless. Amen. It is all in his hands. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Just in case we are thinking that, uh, you know, this is when the church is so immoral. Uh, when Paul is writing this, he's writing to the church in Ephesus. Mm. I'm just imagining what was happening. Well, I, perhaps people were feeling like, uh -uh, I can't go to church anymore because they steal tithes and offerings nowadays. <laughs> I can't go to church because they dress very poorly. Yeah, I can't go to more. church because that elder did this and that. If you're thinking it started now, I'm sorry. It started with, it was there even during <laughs> Ephesians. Yes, Brad. What are your yeah. thoughts? Just briefly. Mm -hmm. if, if you are in a church that is powerless, mm. if you are in a church, you know, uh, that is, uh, there's no life, mm. you know, uh, it's, it's, it's dead, you know, you go there, you know, you don't feel that like you are in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Could it be perhaps we have forgotten that Christ is the head of the church? Mm -hmm. Could it be that we have enthroned our human philosophies mm -hmm. or uh, our human beings as mm -hmm. the, the, the head of the church. Mm -hmm. And that's why the church is not experiencing this power. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, people are looking at, uh, 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 up to human beings, to pastors, mm -hmm. as, as, as their spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves that question and remind ourselves the way Paul was trying to remind the Ephesians, who is really the head of the church? Who was ahead of them? Friend. Christ is the head of the church. Mm. So nothing should bring fear even to the church. Even as the church is trying to evangelize, it's trying to do its work in these uh, days that we are living in. Let us always remember Christ is at the head of the church who has been given all power in heaven and on earth. Amen. Amen. Time is really far much spent. Janet, just one line on the Thursday part. <laughs> on the Thursday part. Yeah. I will just say, um, the Bible says, when we behold Christ, we become like Amen. him. Yeah? Amen. So we should have the desire, you know? It's like when you're chasing your dream, mm -hmm. yeah? We should chase after this dream Amen. as well. Because Speak if you want... Kingdom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to look like Jesus, mm. we must yearn in our hearts. We mm -hmm. must search the scriptures. We, might, we must pray every day. Because if we neglect the exercise of prayer, you know, we will lose the hold. You know, mm -hmm. the hold to grasp on God. You know, it might, it, apotea, it will leave us because we'll not be able to, to you know, focus on him. So mm. let's um, look upon Jesus. Mm. And, you know, when we keep reading his word, when we change our character and behold him every day, we'll become like him. Amen. 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 It's been a wonderful study. The power of the ex exalted Jesus. What just comes, how I can summarize this whole study is... We are called to understand the power of God. Because in Ephesians, we find our identity. Who are we in Christ? The moment you understand who you are, you know, sometimes you don't know even who you are. So you don't even act like it. You are chosen. 
you are redeemed, you are saved by Christ himself. So the moment you understand that, then what do you stand to gain? You stand to gain a lot, an inheritance, you know? And apart from that, how are you supposed to act like? How, well, how are you supposed to live? Live in the power of Christ. Live knowing that God did it. He resurrected Christ. And if he resurrected Christ, then that power that resurrected, resurrected Christ is still there. It is there for you to tap into it. So we should put away all the fears. We should know that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. So long as Christ is there for us, we can live. There is hope for tomorrow. There is hope for as long as we are living. Dear believer, dear viewer who is watching this, I just want to encourage us to, to try, not to try, but to live knowing that there is power in the blood of Jesus and we are called to just exploit. it. If you haven't, start from today. Amen. I'll ask that Janet, please close for us with a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to worship you. We want to praise your name. We thank you for the lesson study we've, we've uh, discussed, Lord, and we ask that may you help our viewers who, have, who also have fear, also have um, questions about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works, that, Lord, you may uh, impart these words that we've discussed today in their hearts. We thank you also for the power of the Holy Spirit that is here to teach us the insights of your word. We ask that, Lord, may you um, draw us closer to you every day and may we also believe in the power of the resurrection of Christ that Lord you are the one owner of everything and when we come to you you will always hear and answer our prayers according to your will be with us now and forevermore I ask all these things believing and trusting in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen.